Hi, welcome to Monday Math Mania. My name is Shannon with Strategic Intervention Solutions. Thanks so much for joining us today. We are in a sweatshirt today because we need to get comfy with fractions. I'm in schools every day and I think as adults when we think of fractions, we never really had a good conceptual understanding of what we were doing. And so today we're going to spend some time on some of my favorite fraction tools to use in schools. We're going to show you a variety of different ways to do adding, subtracting, equivalent fractions, multiplying fractions, and more. The idea is that if children don't have a conceptual understanding of what they're doing in math, they're really memorizing procedures with concepts that they don't understand. Through our coaching project, I'm in schools almost every day across our country asking how kids got their answer. And many kids know the procedural way of how to get there, but they really don't understand conceptually what it means or why the answer is what it is, which in fact just means they're not really learning the, the kind of that, that mild, deep understanding that we want kids to have. So if you're joining us for the first time, thanks so much for joining us. Our website is sis the number four teachersorg This is our last Monday Math Mania for this series. We did four weeks and we'll start up again in the spring and we'll bring out some different um, tips for you to have at home. Last week we did have, I think, around 91 shares, so thanks so much for sharing our video. Kristen Bertoya is the winner of Five Deco Dots, and so Kristen can send us her email address and a message via our Facebook page. We'd be happy to ship those out to her. This week we're going to be asking you to share the video and then put a thumbs up in our comments so that we know that you shared the video. And um, hopefully a lot of your third, fourth, and fifth grade teachers will help, um, you know, to kind of use this vi video to help them. So when kids first learn fractions, you or I, we learned it in a very, you know, really abstract way. And so today what we're going to share is different ways that you can kind of look at fractions differently. And so today we're going to look at this first one um, with lots of different types of tools. And so you have lots of tools for fractions. You have rainbow fraction um, squares that you can use. We're going to use patty paper to help us with some things in fractions. Um, my favorite, of course, are the fraction tiles that you use. We're going to use the area model and use different pieces of paper, as well as pattern blocks. And so when you think of fraction tools, it's really important to know which fraction tool you're using for which type of a problem. And so we're going to first start off with something that just recently happened in a classroom uh, that I was in actually last week. And the children were adding two fractions together. And so the fractions that they were adding together was they were adding together one third plus um, three ninths. Now you or I were taught to skip count, right? Look at the try to find the common denominator. And so the students did try to skip count by threes, six, nine, and they did the nine and they found the common denominator and they went through all of the steps. When I asked these students in the classroom to model their thinking with concrete tools, it was actually very cute. We're going to put it up on our, on our blog, the picture they did. They went to their mass salad bar in their classroom and they got one inch centimeter cubes and actually drew out the one and they made a line with the cubes and the three and they did the plus and they did the equals and they said, here Ms. Smolsky, we've shown you, we showed you that one third plus three ninths equals nine nines, which is total to one whole. When I went up to the group to ask them to prove it because their actual manipulatives didn't do it, um, they went up to the table. When kids are looking at ninths and you're looking at fraction tiles, when you're working with ninths, fraction tiles is not something that I'm going to select because it doesn't go into ninths as I'm wanting to look at the fractional parts of these because it has the one whole, half, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth, tenths, twelfth. So when the kids went to go get a tool, they weren't exactly sure which tool to use. And so I came back to the table and said to them, I'm going to give you two pieces of patty paper. Patty paper you get if you go to the deli they, and you get hamburgers, let's say, they'll put the patty paper in between your patties. And so they work really great. They come in a dispenser um, from any kind of a restaurant store that you can go to, and you can kind of reuse them for fractions. So what I told the group of kids that were working is I said to them, I'm going to take one of the pieces of patty paper and I'm going to fold it into ninths. And so I took one of the pieces for them, I folded it into ninths, and I asked them if they agreed that if I could show this fraction, which was three ninths, um, would, they, would they agree? Actually, I guess our fraction here, my fault, was six ninths um, in the problem that we were doing. 
So that would make more sense as to why we want whole. So if we had six ninths, um, I showed them here are our six ninths, so they could actually see the six ninths. I then gave them another piece of patty paper and said, here I'm going to take a piece of patty paper and fold it into thirds so that I actually have three equal parts. So the first kit I said, I said, I want to know if you can prove it that it's one. I have the six pieces, the six ninths, and the one third. What you would think that um, the kids would do with their six ninths and their one third is the kids look at it and they're kind of thinking, I don't really see where it could actually be a whole. And so the kids sat for a while and she said, well, I said, what did you do first? And she goes, well, you need to skip count. I said, okay. I said, what are you going to skip count by? And she said, I'm going to skip count by threes. And I said, why are you going to skip count by threes? Because you're supposed to. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to skip count by fours. Is that okay? And she goes, well, no, you have to skip count by threes. And I said, well, why? Prove it to me. And she said, because three and nine go you know, the, together. And she said that there would be a common denominator. So when I asked her to show that common denominator on here, even though I felt I could see the one hole pretty easily, she could not. And so the other boys in the group said, well, can we add two things that are not alike? We have something in, in ninths and we have something in thirds. No, we can't. And so the boy said, why don't I take the thirds and I put it into ninths so that they actually match. And I said, okay, now we'd be looking at common pieces. And so they took the, the six, the, ninth, ninth, the six ninths, and they took the third, made it into ninths. So now we were all looking at the same unit. Although the child that did this wrote did not make the connection right away conceptually, a boy who was kind of quiet in her group said, I can see it. I see that it's one whole. And I said, well, how do you know? And he said, because if we have six ninths plus three ninths, if I put it together, he said, it's kind of like you opening up the paper where it's actually nine ninths and I have one whole. And so patty paper can be used when you're using lots of things that have kind of squares. So I could do um, twelfths with it. I could do um, different things with six, so you could kind of see different ways to fold the patty paper. So a really great way when showing adding with uncommon denominators that we cannot add two things together that are not the same. So that would be kind of one tool that's a really great tool to use. In another classroom, we were working on subtraction, and the subtraction problem that they were working on was three um, and two-fourths minus two and two-thirds. Now this got a little bit tricky in this fifth grade classroom because first they had to find the common denominator and then they had to subtract. And so the kids quickly kind of looked at figuring out, okay, they went through and did their 12 and their 12. They asked themselves, how many times does three go into 12? Four times, four times two is eight. And then they did how many times does four go into 12? It goes in um, three times, times two is six. So I said, okay, can you take six twelves from eight twelves? You can't. And so they realized they need to come over here and add another twelve twelves to it to end up getting that we have eighteen twelves minus our eight twelves to subtract to get our ten twelves. Now the boy got the problem right on paper, but I said to him that I wanted him to prove it to me using fraction tiles. What do you think happened in the classroom? He said, well, why would you want me to prove them on here? I think I have the right answer. And I said, well, can you explain it to me in a little bit more depth? And so we have fraction tiles in our mass salad bars. I like to put them in little bags like this or envelopes from the dollar store. You want to make sure with your fraction tiles that you have them labeled because they never end up back in the tray and you always find a fourth laying on the floor. And so this package here is actually... Um, labeled F and so that all the fraction tiles go back in this set. So for this particular child, I actually built for him two-fourths and then I built, um, I built two-thirds to see can you really subtract the two from each other. When he realized that he couldn't, he said I needed to take part of the whole. But the discovery that he had, if he were to actually act this problem out using the fraction tiles, was really eye-opening to him. And so when doing different things with fractions, it's important to, again, make sure kids have conceptual understanding as they're doing it. Another really easy example is when you think of multiplying fractions. So if I were to say one half times one third, 
most of us would look at that and say um, one half times one third. The first step that you do is one times one is one, and the second step you do is six times or three times two is six. When we ask why that is, many kids are not sure what to do. And so this anchor task I learned from a fellow colleague of just giving kids, so I gave a class, these pattern blocks. It had hexagons, rhombuses, um, square, triangle, trapezoid. And I said, can you prove that one half times one third equals one sixth? The kids looked at it and they said, well, I have one half. I have one third and I have one sixth. Many of the kids looked at these pieces and said, well, I have a half times a third and I get a sixth. That's weird because I thought when I multiplied, it actually got larger. But when we looked at this one, they said it got smaller. Many of the kids had no idea other than showing the three pieces to actually know how to solve a problem like this. And so as we talked about in our multiplication Facebook Live video that we did last fall, or towards the end of the, um, yeah, it was probably like November, we were talking about when you say times, we always want to say groups of, or in, multi in multiplying fractions, you want to just say of. So if we reread this and said half of one third, so which piece that I'm looking at is one third? We know if we look at this, this the blue piece is one third of the whole, right? So when I re look at that piece and I say one half of one third, when you're looking at that, half of this is our green triangle, which is how much of our whole, one sixth. It's the same idea if you switch the problem around. For a lot of kids, they said, well, no matter what it is, it's still going to be one sixth. But is the model the same if I were to say one third of half. Let's look at our half. Here's our half. If I asked you to show me one third of this, if I divided that into three equal groups, I would know that the model would actually look like this. And so kids today, when they're starting to understand multiplication, we are so fast to get into the abstract that we don't allow conceptual understanding to help for kids to actually get it. And so whether you're using pattern blocks, fraction tiles, patty paper, it's really important. A big epiphany for me, also learned from a, a colleague of mine, is the value of colored paper. I used to make all kinds of colored fraction tiles um, with different things, but when you look at this, it really helps kids understand. My daughter Emma is in fifth grade, and she came home with different things from her everyday math program and said, Mom, I don't really understand how to do this. And immediately as a parent, I want to say, well, find the common denominator and add them up. But I said, wait a minute, let's see if you can actually conceptually understand this. So you need five pieces of different colored car cardstock, preferably. I'm going to use red as my whole. And then I have purple, always make hamburger folds. And I'm going to do my two, my half with um, purple. And then I have out my yellow is cut into four, so another hamburger fold. I have blue that's cut into eighths, so I've continued to cut these into eighths. And then these are in sixteenths. I like to use these because a lot of your fraction problems have sixteenths and fraction tiles don't work for that. So you can, if you need to, label one sixteenth, you can label one eighth. These are very simple to have in your mass salad bar by just putting them in a clear sleeve. They could be accessible to any child while they're working. Kids should be able to get fraction tools while they're doing independent work and not feel like they have to ask you to go to the math salad bar to get the manipulatives. Kids should feel comfortable enough with math manipulatives that they know which manipulative in your room is going to help them. I would say 95% of the classes that I go into, in the state of Michigan at least, the tools might be in the classroom. They are absolutely not accessible to children, which is one of the eight math practices. When you look at standard five, it is use tools strategically. So Emma came to me and said, Mom, I have a problem that I want to answer. And she said, I have to add together two eighths plus three sixteenths. And so she said to me, what do I do? And so I use this as the whole. And I said to her, well, why don't you show me what that looks like? And so for her to be able to actually build her two eighths, um, to be able to see it on here in an appropriate way, um, was really helpful because she kind of got the idea of seeing that whole. So she had the two eighths, 
and then she had to add two sixteenths. And so when you're using this paper um, with kids, they're actually able to see the pieces that they're actually adding together. And so I'm going to have the camera kind of come a little bit closer here to the table so that we can do this, um, this problem. So if I wanted to be able to show um, my two eighths, and then we wanted to add in our two sixteenths. So we cannot add two things that are not alike. And so we have to figure out how can we make these pieces all look the same. And so Emma used our pieces of paper and said, well, I'm looking at the different colors and she knows that this can't be put into, you know, into force. But she said, could I make them all into sixteenths? And so she covered these all into sixteenths because she felt that that was the common denominator or the common way that you could cover it. She said, I have one, two, three, four, five, six sixteenths. Is that the correct answer? And so when we looked at to see what does one, two eighths plus um, two sixteenths equal, she could, she could see it clearly. When I asked her to tell me what is, this is the, the you know, you always want, there's always this debate about, you know, simplest form. But if I wanted to put the least amount of pieces of paper on here, what could I do to show that fraction another way or equivalent fraction? And so for her to be able to put this on top and say, oh, mom, I think it's the same as three eighths. These pieces of paper are so beneficial for kids that need the conceptual understanding because you could even do subtraction with this. I'm going to give you a half and I want you to take away, um, you know, two eighths. And so a child has to figure out, okay, if I were to make this into eighths, if I have a half minus two eighths, most of us are like, there's no procedure how to get there. But if I were to look at this and say, okay, rethink it again, take away two eighths. I end up with two eighths or which is also the same as one fourth. And so you can stack these papers on top of each other for kids to see conceptual thinking as they're doing it, whether they're doing a half, um, the sixteenths, the eighths. It kind of helps them sort of show this idea. Obviously, we don't want to use concrete tools forever. And so eventually we'll move into more conceptual tools, which would be um, a representational level of being able to draw the picture and show the different ways to be able to get it. So um, we're kind of going to go over here. So tonight we've kind of shared some different things. You kind of get confused because there are so many tools and oftentimes schools have lots of different tools. I would recommend in my third through fifth grade classroom to definitely have a box of the patty paper, even though you probably only need the patty paper more for like fifth grade because you're not doing such high level things, but still kids could see lots of different fractions. I would definitely need a class set um, of either 15 because kids could share if you, you know, if money's no object, obviously they have 30 of these. If you have 30 kids, is really great. But get it organized where kids can use it. The other thing I would use is very inexpensive to be able to make everybody their own fraction paper area model toolkit. Um, the other thing you can use, we're not going to share tonight, are also quiz and error rods. is another really great way to show fractions um, as well. I don't prefer the pie pieces or some of the other things because they kind of get... Um, messy, but if you have a good organizational way for kids to use it, get the tool out, um, that's really great. And obviously when you're using pattern blocks, um, you know, these are great because you could do lots of activities and I could make two of these be the whole and I could do lots of things with adding, subtracting. The big piece is that you want kids to be able to prove their answer. So if you're doing fractions in your classroom and kids are going through a procedure to get there, ask them to prove their answer or question them. I think questioning is among one of the biggest areas that we're working on in schools today is to help question kids to see exactly what they know. And so the next time you're with kids, even if they're correct, ask, question them and act like they're wrong or put a problem up that's the wrong answer and tell them that you think it's the right answer and get them to prove their own way. Thanks so much for joining us for our Monday Math Main come back at you probably in the spring with another series of different things. We're going to focus a little bit more in on problem solving during that time.